Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to play Hellboy the board game. Yes, we've already done one case. I'm excited to do another one. I hope that's okay. I painted my minis, so I hope you guys enjoy how it looks. We're going to be playing the Downward Spiral case. So if you don't want to see spoilers, don't watch this. <laughs> because uh, I am going to spoil everything. But we'll jump really quickly into showing you our one new character. I'm going to assume you already know uh, Hellboy. Oh, and by the way, I play this with my six-year-old son, and we call the game Hey Boy for him. So if I accidentally say Hey Boy, sorry, it's it's Hellboy, I know, but it was my way of allowing him to play it, but not having him say hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yes, even a six-year-old can play this game. He loves this game, by the way. Dad, can we play Hey Boy again? <laughs> So we've been really enjoying this together. I will say I have not played this case yet, so we're going to uh, enjoy this one together first time. I used Abe in our last case, so nothing really new here other than I'm giving him the armor piercing and the warding talisman. Remember, we have a total of seven credits that we can use and share between the team of three, so I'm playing with the three characters again. Uh, so I'm using four of them actually for him. Here's his mini painted. I think he looks a lot cooler now. Uh, <laughs> I love his look. I, I love the jacket and it's just, yeah, totally him. Our new character for this time is Liz Sherman. She's a little bit of a challenge to play with because she can sometimes blow herself up, but she's also incredibly powerful. So we're going to go ahead and use her. Uh, she has special rules, volatile. Advance the living flame track when Liz suffers damage from an attack or any other source of damage. If it advances to a red space, advance it an additional time. And here we have our living uh, flame card. And if we get to the top, something bad's going to happen. But the higher up we go, we've got these numbers on the side. And when we attack with our flame blast, which you'll see in a second, we get to add that amount of damage. So it's kind of a, uh, when you push your luck. <laughs> she is fireproof, so Liz never suffers fire damage and ignores the effects of Infernos. And then her focus is when using the flame blast attack, you can spend your a wild result to move the living flame marker to any other space on here before resolving the attack. She's got a couple of unique actions. She can stoke the fire, advance the living flame by one or two, which is nice. Flame blast, that's her ranged weapon that she can use, along with she also just has a sidearm. Uh, this attack inflicts fire damage and adds the living flame level to the test score, so whatever this is at. Then, after that, and by the way, when you do a fire damage, you have to place an inferno in that location. So she's going to be dropping infernos everywhere. <laughs> They're a little bit annoying, but sometimes they can actually be super helpful because they can burn frog swarms. After the attack, reduce the living flame tracker by one. So that's one of the ways you can lower the track as well. Finally, she is emulate. Put an inferno in Liz's area and each adjacent explored area. Then roll a red die. Each other character in Liz's area suffers fire damage equal to the score plus the living flame level. Each character in an adjacent area suffers fire damage equal to the score alone. After the attack, reduce the living flame tracker by two. Yeah, so she can kind of do like a mini bomb. <laughs> Because she's likely to hurt herself, though, I do have her holding on to the field uh, field dressings. Here we have Hellboy. You guys should be quite familiar with him if you have seen the other playthrough. Uh, the only thing that you need to know is he's got the Ancient Blade this time. The melee weapon, it's, it's considered a melee weapon. When you fight, you get to gain one upgrade. And then if you roll the wild symbol when using this weapon, double the result of one test die in addition to any other outcome. Yeah. Downward Spiral. Okay, we've got a weird one for you. For a couple of decades now, we've been keeping an eye on a particular forest in Romania, said to have been haunted for years. It's never been high enough of a priority to check out until now. It looks like things have been getting very strange there over the past two years, although word only just reached us. The locals have been telling stories of strange voices in the trees, gravity not working like it should, birds flying backwards. It's a regular checklist of a strange phenomenon. We've put together a profile, and everything seems to be centered on a disused mine shaft. The tunnel opens out in the middle of the forest. Head out there and be ready for anything. With a concentration of crazy occurrences like this, there's no telling what you might find. Yeah, this is going to be a hard one. Uh, the duration is medium. <laughs> I think we lost a medium last time. So yeah, don't expect us to win. I have everything set up. You can see how the encounter deck set up for three agents and the different types of doom cards. Set up the insight markers as followed, depending on the number of agents. We're at three. So one on the lead agent's board. So I don't know if you saw that. I did have one on uh, Hellboy's board. <laughs> Hellboy, not Hayboy. Uh, and then I have them. We have uh, spaces 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 of the information gathered track. 
Then we have put a reaction marker on this card and its matching trigger on the spot 7 of the impending doom track. If the impending doom marker reaches the trigger marker or if all agents are knocked out at the same time, skip to the end phase, flip this card at the end of the at the end of the phase. Move this card to the in play area, discard it if the confrontation begins. As soon as you set foot inside the tunnel, you can see why the locals have been telling stories about it. The whole place is an unsettling vibe. You can't put your finger on it, you just know it feels wrong. Glancing at your watch, you see that the hand's spinning in opposite directions. Wow, we still have an analog clock. <laughs> the less said about your compass, the better. Even the floor is off-putting, angling ever downwards as you advance. You should do your best to keep your lunch down. We have set up all the minions, and then when an agent collects an insight marker, flip this card. So when we get our first insight marker, or I guess our second one, uh, because we already have one, so I'm assuming I need to get a second one, then we will flip this card. I forgot to show you the other two mini minis. So here we have Liz Sherman. She looks pretty cool. She's got fire coming out of her arm. I love it. And then, of course, we have Hellboy himself. <laughs> I love that right arm. Looks awesome. Just a quick reminder, here are our different rounds. We'd start with the enemy phase, but there's no enemies on the board, so we'll start right off with the agent phase. We're starting way at the top of the long labyrinth of tiles that we have, so let's go ahead and start off. It's a free action to open a door, so we'll go ahead and grab this door off, and that means we get to reveal this encounter card. In the first square, we'll have a scenery one, frog swarm, and clue, and then the second one will have a scenery one, a point of interest, and a minion B. We also have a tremor. Each agent is immediately attacked by a melee attack with an attack value of 5. Well, there's nothing like saying, let's start the game by getting attacked by the Earth. <laughs> okay, our first defense roll will be with Hellboy. He rolls orange dice. I don't see anything that needs to downgrade this because it's just a basic melee attack. So we're being attacked for 5. We'll roll these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We blocked it all. Great. Uh, that means Liz is next. She also uses orange to defend. So we'll roll one, two, three, four. So she'll take one point of damage. And with that, remember, she's got her living flame now. So every time she takes a point of damage, this is going to move up one spot, which I'm actually okay with right now. Finally, we do have Abe, and Abe only rolls yellow dice. I could use someone, you know, I might. I might use uh, one of Liz's, let's use one of Liz's uh, cubes. Now, something I did wrong in the last playthrough is I thought I could give uh, assist with as many cubes as I want. You can only ever assist with one cube. So I'm going to assist with one cube to power up one of these to an orange. Just so it doesn't take too much damage here. So he's rolling one orange and two yellow. And, oh, one, two, three. I can re-roll one of these. Do I want to? That's only two damage. Eh, it seems like a bad idea to do that reroll. I'm just going to go ahead and take the two damage. The only minion we have is a transforming frog monster. Yeah, th those guys aren't too terrible. They actually want to run away. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have Liz use her second action token to move into that space. And then her third action is she's going to clear out this frog swarm. We don't like the frog swarms because they reduce our... Whenever we do tests in that area, they make us downgrade dice. Then I'm going to go ahead and have... Abe spend one of his cubes to move here and you know what I actually can move two spaces so I'm going to move myself all the way into this spot with the uh, transforming frog monster and then for my second action I'm going to attack him we have a harpoon here and so it says it's a melee weapon we can up upgrade one die for each fight test using this weapon so I have spent one more cube to fight I still have one cube left that transforming frog monster only has four health with one resilience. We're rolling two orange and one red since we get the one upgrade. It's a question of do I want to just spend, you know what, I'm going, no, nah, I'm hoping that he can just take them out with that and then we can uh, deal with that point of interest. We're hoping for five total hits here. Let's see. We get, wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's a wild... Abe has quick reflexes. When testing fight or shoot, he can spend that wild syst uh, the wild symbol to return one of his action cubes to the board. <laughs> he just did that attack, didn't take any actions. That's amazing. Well, I had to do a little bit of FAQing, but I have figured out that I can't do anything with that point of interest. So Abe still has two actions. So I think the first thing he's going to do is he's going to open up this door. Okay, because let's see what's going to happen in this next room. We get two frog swarms and a clue and a minion D. With that type of flip, I think my hands are tied as to what I can do. I need to go into here and take out one of these. Otherwise, that's going to push up my impending doom if I have two frog swarms. But now I'm sitting in a spot with, <laughs> with a frog swarm. That's a bummer. 
Hellboy actually has not done any activation yet. So he's going to spend his first cube. He's going to move into here. And we're going to go ahead and check out that clue. Hellboy rolls blue, orange dice for uh, ex examinations. He does have his seen it all before. Once per round when Hellboy spends an action cube to upgrade a test die in an examine test for himself or another agent, he can upgrade two dice. That's tempting. But then I have Abe there. He's going to get attacked by another, what, five points of damage? And he already is the most wounded. Well, you know what? We do have our field dressing. Let's do it. I, I want to get a success here. So I've spent one cube to move there. And I'm going to spend one cube to do the examine. And I'm going to burst uh, uh, power up two of these. So two of them will turn into a red. That's just because of his special ability. So normally that would only be able to upgrade one die. So he's rolling two red and one orange. If we can get six, we'll actually move two up. So let's see. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So we're going to get two. We're going to move up two spaces on the uh, insight track. That means we're going to get a second insight marker. And that's the first one that we've collected for this game. This card states when an agent collects an insight marker, flip this card. The walls and ceilings of the tunnel are covered here and there with crazed scrawl, a crude mix of ancient languages and runes that hurts your head to look at. Whoever did this must either be totally insane or... No, actually, screw all the alternative. You're pretty sure they're just totally insane. <laughs> Here, you also find a strange totem. You could destroy it in the hope of slowing down whatever rite or ritual this place is building towards, or hold on to it. After all, it might come into handy later. Move this card to the in-play area. During the agent phase, agents can spend an action cube to discard an insight marker from their agent's board and reduce the impending doom track by one. Wow, I've never had one where you can actually reduce it. Discard this card when the confrontation begins. Oh, here we go. If there are any points of interest on the board, flip this card immediately. Otherwise, flip this card as soon as a point of interest is placed on the board. Yeah, we're flipping this. A maddening pressure starts to build in your skull, and you swear you can hear voices whispering on the edge of your perception. This place sucks. Move this card to the in-play area, put a reaction marker on it, and its matching trigger marker on the point of interest that is closest to the starting area. Yeah, the one that's two away from the starting area. All agents who are further from the starting area than this point of interest downgrade an additional die on any test they make. <laughs> so we basically, for the rest of this scenario, will have one downgrade automatically. Great. Here we have flip this card as soon as there are two points of interest on the board. So we don't. We only have one. We've ended the agent phase. We move to the rest phase. We can't rest. There's an enemy out. So we're going to move to the doom phase. Let's draw our top doom card. And we have trap. Advance the impending doom track. Great. The lead agent and each other agent in their area, which would be Liz, uh, must either suffer two damage or be stunned. Now I'm going to have each of them suffer two damage. They can take that. Liz, that means her uh, infernal flame, though, is going to go up a little bit more. Jeez. We're, we're just getting hammered here, you guys. Her living flame will move all the way up to two. We'll push this up to the two spot. We'll then move to the end phase, and the only thing we need to do is resolve that frog swarm. If it's in the same area as an agent, it moves to an adjacent explored area chosen by the agents. This area cannot contain any agents, uh, so he can actually move either way. I think I'm going to have him move this way back up here. We can maybe just ignore him. I don't know. No, you know what? Actually, I have a better idea. Uh, they, get, they get killed when you uh, fire them. I can go ahead and have Liz shoot some fire in there and blow them up. <laughs> Also during that end phase, we'll all refresh all of our action cubes so everyone has their three action cubes back. We'll go ahead and start the next round. We'll start with that enemy phase. That venomous frog monster is going to attack Abe for five damage. We're going to have to spend one action cube just so that we can roll the three yellow dice. Because remember, we have to downgrade since we're past that point of interest. So that makes us to have, go back up to at least having the three yellow dice for this defense. And we get to times two our one. So we took three damage there. That fills up our track, you guys, already. We're only in the second round of this game. <laughs> we'll now move into that agent phase, and I'm going to have Liz spend one action to move into here with Abe. Then her second action is she's going to attack that venomous frog monster. We're going to use our flame blast, so that means it's going to inflict fire damage. We're going to have to place an inferno there, but then it'll add the living flame level to the score. So her living flame level is two, so we're going to add two to this. After the attack, reduce the flame tracker by one. We have to downgrade that one die because of that point of interest. So her uh, range is normally red, so two red and one orange. And we hit him for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus two, nine, ten. <laughs> I think we killed him. And what's great is that Inferno will kill the Frog Swarm. 
we've placed our inferno there now if an agent moves into that area they actually don't take any damage but if they move out of that area they will take two damage also flames or infernos will hurt you at the end phase as well so if you end your turn in a space with an inferno it'll hurt you at the end we then are going to use our final action to use our field dressing. Spend an action to heal up to a total of two damage from another agent. So two from Abe, thank goodness, because <laughs> he was at full. Oh, and I need to remember to push this down to one. Uh, and then we have to flip this card. And I think we can do that one more time. Uh, it's only to heal one damage, but at least we can heal one more. <laughs> Finally, let's have Hellboy go. He's kind of bringing up that rear. He's going to spend one action to move into this space, and then he'll spend his remaining two actions, one to do the search or the examine, and one to power it up. We start our search with two orange and one yellow, but with our double upgrade, we'll actually change this yellow back to an orange and then an orange to a red. So one red, two orange. We're hoping for six or more, and we roll times two. Two times two is four, plus one is five. Oh, we only get to move one up on the track. Ah, uh, that hurt a little bit. I was hoping, oh man, I was so hoping that we were going to get another one of these uh, tokens because I was actually thinking of doing a rest, but maybe not now. Well, I've never done this before. Abe has two action cubes. I don't think there's anything he's going to use them for. Oh, and he's going to use one. It'd be silly not to use one for this. Spend an action cube to flip this card and tuck it under your weapon. He now has armor piercing, uh, uh, an armor piercing weapon. His shoot test, he gets to reduce resilience by two. You run out of ammo in this game if you roll the skull result. So I also gave him that warding talisman. So if he rolls that skull, he gets to re-roll it. So very likely, he's going to keep his armor piercing ammo the whole game. Hopefully. Okay, now let's draw our Doom card, and we have put this into play, the otherworldly mist. During the next agent phase, agents only have visibility to areas adjacent to them. Enemies are unaffected. At the end of the agent phase, shuffle this card back into the Doom deck. Interesting. We'll move to that end phase, and we'll resolve that inferno. So in each area with an inferno, remove one clue, one frog swarm, and any scenery. So we're going to remove the frog swarm. Thank you. Then we have to roll a red die. On a zero, it's removed. On a one, a two, or three, any character takes damage. There's none going to be there. Also on a three, it spreads. So hopefully we don't roll a three. What would be great is if we rolled a zero. Now it's a one. So it's just going to stay there. We'll have to spend an action to get rid of it. We've all gathered our three action cubes back. We're ready for the next round. Let's start off with Liz this time. She's going to spend one action to move into this space and then for free open up this door and let's see what we get for this encounter card we had a clue a minion b a scenery one and a frog swarm and we have an ambush the minion in this room is immediately activated as though it were the enemy phase well the minion b is one of those transforming frog monsters so when they activate they're going to try and run away but we have to first see if they're going to turn into a, a rampaging frog monster by rolling a yellow die We'll give our die a roll, and it's blank. That just means he's going to run away. He's not going to turn into a rampaging frog monster. So he'll run himself all the way over to here. <laughs> now, here's the fun part. We have that otherworldly mist out, so we can't see him. So I think what I'm going to do is just spend my remaining two actions as Liz to run into here and clear out this frog swarm. I don't want to deal with that frog swarm. Then we'll have Hellboy go ahead and spend two actions one to just move here, two to clear the fire. And remember, anyone other than Liz would have taken damage had they moved out of that space with that Inferno. But Liz is immune to fire. That's why I didn't even worry about it. And then our third action is we're going to run in here, one and then two. But we can't attack, so we don't have any more cubes. But this, this allows Abe then... Abe will spend one action. He is slippery, so he can actually move three spaces. Actually, it's called Agile. So he's going to move one, two, three, move into here, and he's just going to attack this guy melee. And you know what? I'm going to pretend I wasn't stupid. I'm going to have Hellboy be over there with his clue so he can try and clue next time. So I believe that still was his three actions because one, yep, yep, one to move and take care of the Inferno, uh, then two to take care of the Inferno, and three to move to there. So I wanted him there because I knew Abe was going to come over here and attack. Abe is going to roll three orange dice for his fight test. He has his harpoon, which would let him upgrade one die, but then that point of interest puts it down to the orange. So three orange, looking for five hits to take him out. And oh, there's a skull, but you know what the nice thing is? We have our warding talisman. We can reroll the skull. Come on, be something good. Two, three, four. Four damage. Oh, we only did three damage to him. He has one health left. And you know what? We have one more action cube, so let's go ahead and use it. We can take him out here. That's no problem. Let's roll him up. Oh, beautiful. Three hits. 
That will say Sayonara, Transforming Frog Monster. We're going to go ahead and complete our agent phase. Now, we can do a rest phase, and I think I'm going to do it this time. We can only do this if there are no enemies on the board. Each agent picks one of the rest actions. So investigate. Discard a clue counter on the board and advance the information gathered twice. So I'll go ahead and have, um, let's have Hellboy do that. Because, yeah, he is has the least amount of damage. So we get to take this clue that was in his spot, and we are going to examine it, essentially, and get to move it up two spaces. That will give us another insight token. So we have a total of three insight tokens now. We could recuperate, roll two red dice, and heal damage equal to the score. Yeah, you know uh, the other two are definitely going to do that, because the third one that we can do is secure, remove all four frog swarms and infernos. There aren't any, so we're totally good. Then we can have agents freely trade items. I'm good with items. We reset the priority track. We haven't even used the priority track, but we do have to advance the impending doom. Also, Abe has rapid healing. Whenever the agents take time, Abe heals two damage. So he's going to heal two right now, and now we'll roll two red dice and see if he can heal some more. Come on, Abe. Let's see some healing. Perfect. He is healed to full. We'll take that off. And then Liz will just do the healing as well. We'll roll two. She heals two out of her three damage, so she only has one left. Oh, that felt good, even if I have to push up the impending doom track. Speaking of which, oh boy, let's see what we get here. We have Bad Temper. Put this card into play next to Hellboy's Agent's board. Each round, one of Hellboy's actions can only be spent to make a fight action. Now, I did this wrong the last time. I thought fight included shoot. It does not. So I'll have to make sure one of his actions is fight. Of course, we got this now because it says discard this card when Hellboy suffers an injury or when agents take time. I just took time. <laughs> Oh, well. But, hey, the impending doom track didn't go up. That's good. This otherworldly miss now is at the end of the round. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle that into this deck again. I apologize. I missed stating that when you do your rest action, you can also move to any explored area. So we have just gone ahead and moved us all right up to here. We've done our end phase. Everyone has our three action cubes back. Let's go ahead and do a search, or a, um, not a search, a reveal the next room. And let's see what this encounter card is. Ooh, a minion heavy one. A minion B, a minion A, a clue, all in the first room. And then the second room, a minion C, and a frog swarm. I think we'll start off with using Abe. Abe's going to use his precise shot. He's going to try and shoot this uh, rampaging frog monster. It's going to cost him two action cubes, but he can make a shot ignoring all scenery and all characters other than the target, so we don't have the reduction with the other enemy in that space. These rampaging frog monsters have six health with two resilience, but we have our armor piercing ammo, so that resilience is nullified. We are going to use our third action cube here to bump this back up into a red die. So we're rolling three red dice. I'm really hoping for six hits here. Six hits. We just take them out with one shot. What do you say? What do you say? Three, four, five, six, seven. Boom. Don't even need the reroll. This guy is toast. We're then going to have Hey Boy go ahead and move himself into this space. And remember, I have to do a fight action as one of my actions. That's great. I'm going to do my big right hook. Our big right hook, we can make a fight action. If you hit, the target suffers three additional damage and is stunned and hurled. <laughs> yeah, this poor guy with only four health and one resilience. We do also have our ancient blade. So when we're using this as an attack, we get to gain one upgrade. So we're going to get to roll just the three red dice. We don't have any reduction because of that point of interest. Three red dice and our effect die. Let's see what we get. We'll roll it up. Three, four, five, six. We totally took him out. We're then going to hurl him into the other room, and we're going to hit that armored frog. So we're chucking his carcass over to the other room, and the armored frog is going to have to roll an orange die, and he's just going to suffer that amount of damage from the carcass of that transforming frog. Okay, one damage. Woo! One. He has, what, I think uh, five health left. That was one heck of a hit. <laughs> so then, finally, we'll have Liz go. She's going to move one here for one action. Action two, she's going to use her Flame Blast. What's great about this is we're going to be able to place an Inferno in that spot, and that's going to destroy the Frog Swarm. We're going to spend our final Action Cube to power it up, so we're rolling three red. Because this guy has, uh, what, six, well, five health. Five health and two Resiliency. So let's see. Two, four, six. Oh, that's our special. Right now, our Living Flame is at plus one. We can use our Focus ability with using that to put it wherever we want it on here. I'm going to put it here. So we've got two, four, six, seven, eight damage minus the two Resilience. That's six damage on him. He already has one. He's gone. <laughs> That's awesome. We'll drop an Inferno in that spot. And then we'll reduce this by one. 
Well, I'd say we cleared that room pretty well. What do you think? <laughs> we'll now have to move to the rest phase. We're going to skip that. We'll move to the doom phase. We'll flip our deck of doom, and we have rumbling underfoot. Put this card into play. And during the next agent phase, agents can only move up to one area as part of a move action, even if they have a rule that would normally let them move more. At the end of the agent phase, shuffle this card back in. <laughs> I like this. This is fun. Uh, the only thing, I've not seen a lot that are pushing up or impending doom, which is great. During the end phase, the Inferno is going to burn up the Frog Swarm, and then we'll roll a red die, and it's a two, so it's going to stay there. Anyone would take two damage, but there's not, no one there, so it's not going to go away. It's not going to spread. Three would make it spread. To start this round, let's go ahead and do an examine of that clue. Hellboy will spend one action cube, and I'm going to have Liz power him up by one, so at least he can throw, roll three orange. As long as we get three successes here, we'll get one insight token. That'll be our fourth one. And one, two, three, four. Yep, that's bigger than three. So we'll move up one on the information track. I will take that. Thank you very much. Liz will then spend one action to move here and then freely open this door. She only has one action cube left. And we'll flip our encounter card. And we have a clue in this room. A minion B, a clue. Oh wow, two clues. And a point of interest, here's our point of interest, and a frog swarm. Falling masonry. Each agent is immediately stunned and targeted by a melee attack with an attack value of four. Jeez. A stunned agent cannot make any actions. They can stand up by spending two action cubes in the agent phase. Stunned backup agents must use their action cubes to stand up. Okay, stunned backup, blah, blah, blah. So we have to spend two action cubes to stand back up. That means Hellboy won't even be able to stand up because he only has two action cubes left and one has to be used for fighting and Liz won't be able to stand up either. And it says here when a stunned agent defends against an attack they suffer one downgrade. So apparently opening up that door knocks all of us over on our sides all the way down. <laughs> We have a couple clues that we can check out. At least there's only one weak enemy here that's going to run away from us. And we have a frog swarm and we have the point of interest. So we all have to get attacked for the attack of four. Then we will go ahead and flip the case card. We're going to start off with Hellboy. He right now has two downgrades. One because of that point of interest and two because he's stunned. Since he's not going to be able to do anything else with his two action cubes though, he's going to spend both his two action cubes to put these back up. There we go to full so we've got three orange dice for defending this is defending against an attack of four and we get two three so we only took one point of damage that's not terrible that's the good one uh liz is next she's going to be the same thing these three to start with she'll spend her one action cube to go ahead and pump this one up to an orange so two orange and a yellow she's getting attacked for four and she blocks two so she's going to take two points of damage and she's going to move up the flaming, uh, the living flame twice. Why twice is she moves into the red area. And the moment you move into the red area, you move one additional space. She's at a plus three. Whew. Then for poor, poor Abe. So Abe normally rolls yellow dice. He's got two downgrades. So he's going to do this. He has all three of his action cubes. So that means he could actually stand up and do something. So I don't, do I just soak the four? I'm going to soak the four damage. I'm just going to roll these two. And let's see what we get. And he gets a skull. Hey, he gets a skull. He has his warding talisman. He can re-roll that. Don't you roll a skull again. Okay. That's two. He only takes two damage. That's not the end of the world. Uh, but yeah, two damage for him. He was fully healed. Flip this card as soon as there are two points of interest on the board. The ground lurches underfoot. At first you wonder if it's just some kind of vertigo brought on by the weird surroundings. But no, the floor's rumbling. Yeah, we can see you can hear it as much as you can feel it. Even the bad guys are spooked, and they know what's going on here. <laughs> Move this card to the in play area. In the enemy phase, unengaged minions do not behave according to their target, uh, their tags. Oh, interesting. Instead, they move as far as possible towards the starting area, avoiding areas containing agents where possible. Uh, if a minion has to move into an area containing an agent, it does so, then stops and makes a melee attack. If a minion moves so that it is no longer visible to any agent, it is removed. Discard this card when the confrontation begins. And we have here, if all rooms are explored or there is a total of six or more insight markers on the agent's boards, flip this card. We have four, one, two, three, four. So we need to get two more. Well, everyone's just lying on the floor, taking a nap <laughs> or trying to catch their feet or balance, so to speak. Uh, I'm going to have Abe spend two of his action cubes so he can stand back up and his third action uh, we're just going to move him here. We can only move one space anyways because of the rumbling underfoot. You know what? With Hellboy, you guys, he took a point of damage. Uh, his bad temper can be discarded, finally. <laughs> 
Thanks for taking that injury. Uh, we will move to the rest phase. Can't rest. So I think that means we will just go to the doom phase. We'll draw this. Okay, there's an advancing the doom track. That's just time's wasted. Yes, doom deck. Yes, it is. Now, here's the thing. There are two clues in that room. If I can get myself all the way to here, I need to make sure I get a six or higher for both of those examination tests. But if I do that, or I can even just do a rest action once I get rid of that uh, that monster, the transforming frog monster, uh, that would allow us to actually get a total of six insight markers. So this is actually an idea. But first, this transforming frog monster has to see if it's going to transform into a rampaging frog monster, and then it's going to start running towards the exit. You know you don't want to transform. You know you don't want to transform. Yes, you don't transform. Here's the thing, though. His movement is two. He's going to move right into here with Liz, and he's going to attack Liz. Now, his attack value is pretty wimpy. It's only four, so hopefully she can defend this. If she doesn't, her living flame will be at the highest point before she essentially explodes. <laughs> okay, uh, we have two downgrades, one because we're stunned and one because of that point of interest. So two yellow and an orange. Getting attacked for only four points, though. Four points of damage. One, two, three, four, five. Great, we blocked it all. So I think we're going to go ahead and start off with Abe. He's going to spend two actions to do that precise shot, and he is going to shoot this, uh, this transforming frog monster. Abe normally rolls three red dice for his shoot actions. Uh, he has to downgrade one. He doesn't have to worry about Liz being in that same spot because he's doing the precise shot. And he does have armor-piercing ammo, so he's going to shoot two, four. Oh, we can use that to get one of our action cubes back. <laughs> That's awesome. So we still have two action cubes. That's four damage. That's going to take him out. I'm realizing that I should have shuffled this into the Doom deck, so I'll do that now. And then I'll have Abe spend the remaining two of his actions, because he got one back, to move into here where the Inferno is and take care of it, clear it. Then I'm going to have Liz and Hellboy spend two out of their three actions to stand back up. And I'm, I, yeah, I think that's it. I have one additional action for each of them, but I'm not going to do anything because I am going to do another rest. What I'm going to do for my rest action is I'm going to have two agents do the investigate. That's going to get us the last two of the insight markers that we need. And then I'm going to have Liz go ahead and do the uh, secure to get rid of that frog swarm. So I'm going to move all three of us to here. We'll take care of this clue and this clue and this frog swarm. And heck, we took time so Abe can use his rapid healing and he's going to heal his two points of damage. This is actually pretty awesome because we're going to go one, two, one, two. We moved up the gather information four spaces. We got two more insight markers. I'm going to give one to Liz and one to Hellboy because that's what they did. Now, Hellboy has five. Liz has six. So if all rooms are explored or there's a total of six or more insight markers on agents boards, flip this card. Oh, but before that, though, I'm going to push up the uh, Doom Tracker. The air pressure perceptibly drops, and you hear a noise like silk ripping mixed with a tree crashing down in a thunderstorm. <laughs> the flagstones beneath your feet start to crack and bulge, writhing tentacles pushing their way up through the floor. Uh, this just got serious. Move this card to the in-play area. During the confrontation, agents can do any of the following. Discard an insight to make one of your shoot or fight actions cause fire damage. Discard an insight and spend an action cube to place an inferno in your area. Discard an insight to reroll any of the dice for a shoot or fight action. Oh, that's awesome. This is the confrontation. Great. We have found the final confrontation. Set it up as described on page 26. The boss for this confrontation is the tentacles of Sadu Hem. <laughs> we saw the tentacles last time. We got annihilated by them. Let's see if we can do a little better this time. Before constructing its behavior deck, find the explosive arrival card and set it aside. Then resolve the explosive arrival card. There are two ways to complete this case. If the agents defeat all enemies on the board, they complete the case as normal. If at least one agent's in the starting area in the end phase, they can call for backup and technically complete the case, but HQ wouldn't be nearly as impressed. Now, we're going to try and kill this thing. We are pissed at it last time. It took us out. Let's see if we can take it out. Well, are you ready for this? The Tentacles of Sadum Hem. Do you remember them? They have 25 health. The range is only one at least. Uh, they have resilience of five. They have a range attack of seven, a melee attack of 10. This enemy takes up four characters spaces. Uh, each space can only hold a total of six. So that means only two agents can be in the same space as him. It cannot be stunned or hurled. Totally makes sense. This enemy has a resilience of two against attacks that cause fire damage. Yeah, he does not like fire damage. Devastation, if this enemy moves, place a destruction counter in the area it started in. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be fun. But wait, that's not it. He has an explosive arrival. 
place the boss in the area containing the most agents. So it's where they all are. I put them all in the same spot. Why would I do that? Because I didn't know. <laughs> all other characters in the area are hurled and a destruction counter is placed in the area. Each character that is hurled suffers five damage minus its resilience. Uh, so we get to do a defend roll against the five damage, but we're all gonna get hit for five damage. So I think with this hurl, I'll have to do one at a time and I'm gonna have each one thrown in a different room, but if they had been thrown in a room that another character was in, they'd also have to roll an orange die for damage. Here we have our tentacles. Oh, they look awesome. I love this mini though. I think they did a great job on this mini. Those tentacles are gonna come out of the ground and then throw each agent. Abe's gonna get hurled to here. Hellboy's gonna be thrown to here. And Liz will be thrown over to here. Let's have Hellboy defend first, two orange and one yellow. This is for five damage, five, four, three, two, one. Let's use our reroll to reroll this yellow. Come on, darn. So he took one point of damage, that's okay. He can soak that. Liz will have the same three dice that she rolls. Come on, Liz. If she takes damage, her living flame goes up to five, but that might not be bad from what I'm thinking of doing. Yeah, there's three there. She's gonna take two points of damage. That's gonna fill up her track. That's more what I'm worried about. She's gonna start uh, getting downgrades, but her living flame, which was at a four or a three right here is gonna move up two spaces up to here. Normally it'd move one, but since it's in the red space, it moves an additional spot. Finally, it's poor Abe and he is gonna spend one of his action cubes so at least he can roll three yellow dice. Normally he'd only roll two. <laughs> All right, he's getting hit for five damage. Uh, four, we can count this as, oh, we can count this as two as this because it's a, it's a wild symbol. So that's three, so he only took two damage. Ooh, that was, that was a clutch roll. At this point, we could run away, but we're not scared. Well, we're slightly scared, okay? <laughs> a little bit, but we're not scared enough. We're gonna go ahead and have some fun. I'm gonna have Liz move into that space for action one. Then we're gonna do our immolate. Unfortunately, this is gonna hurt our friends as well, but you know what? They're fire resistant-ish. <laughs> uh, we're using our two remaining actions. Put an inferno in Liz's area and each adjacent explored area, then roll a red die. Each other character in Liz's area, which includes the, the tentacles, suffers fire damage equal to the score plus the living flame level, which is five. Each character in an adjacent area suffers the fire damage equal to the score alone. So just whatever we roll on the red die. After the attack, reduce the living flame by two. So I'm just gonna do this so I don't forget. We're down to three, but we're adding five damage off the bat. And this is suffer. So because it says suffer, I think this goes through his resiliency. So even though his resiliency is normally two for fire, it's gonna be zero for this. And we're gonna place a lot of these infernos though. I probably don't want this red die to go too high. Let's see what I get. I get a one. Okay, that's not bad. So we just dealt six damage to the uh, tentacles and then one damage to Abe and Hellboy. Hellboy though, don't forget he is fire resistant. So if it had been like a four, he would only would have taken one damage because he is fire resistant. The last time we fought this tentacles, we did not have Liz. Wow, Liz is helpful against these tentacles. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's already down to 19. Both Abe and Hellboy will suffer one damage because of that red die. For Hellboy, let's go ahead and use all three of our action cubes. We're gonna use our pistol here. We're gonna have a little fun. We're gonna shoot and we're gonna spend one insight marker to make it uh, have fire damage. So his resiliency is only two. This is a ranged weapon if the target hits. So I need to be able to hit, which is why I wanna use the insight marker. I think I did this wrong in the last playthrough. I have to make sure I get through his resiliency, but if I do, he suffers five additional damage. And then we're gonna to have to flip this. It's gonna be out of ammo. We're gonna use that insight marker to make it be fire damage. We normally would only roll this because of the one downgrade, but then we did use two additional action markers to boost this up. So we do get one more yellow and then we're gonna choose one yellow or change one yellow into uh, orange. Ugh, is this gonna be worth it? I don't know, we probably should have done the big right hook, but uh, it's just too much fun to suffer five straight damage. We just need to make sure we get past two hits here. So we get one, two, three, four, five, sweet. So we did five plus the five, we did a total of 10 damage. He has resiliency only of two, so we just dealt him eight damage. <laughs> yes. We'll move this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he's all the way down to 11. And Abe hasn't even gone yet. Abe has two action tokens remaining. He's gonna use both, one to do a ranged attack and one to boost it up. So he's got his three red dice. He's going to use his harpoon. 
flipped this card to use it as a ranged weapon, adding four to the result. But then we lost the harpoon. But adding four, we're also going to make this a flame attack, so that way his resiliency is only two. We aren't using our uh, our gun, so we don't get the two uh, resiliency uh, reduction. That would be great if we had that on top of this, but no, we're not using that. We don't have armor-piercing ammo with a uh, harpoon. <laughs> but we're adding four to this roll. So four, uh, we can re-roll. Yeah, let's re-roll this one. Oh, come on, be a three. Oh, it's a three. Okay, so add four to this. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Minus two, we just dealt him ten damage. We knocked him down to one health, you guys. We, we are super powered. This will push him all the way down from eleven down to one. Yeah, because ten damage. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, nobody has any more actions left. We just need one more point of damage, and we could have taken him out before he activated. No, that's not happening. We're then going to move to the end phase. We're going to have to roll a red die for each of these areas. Guess guess what? If this one deals a 1, 2, or 3 damage, it's going to kill the uh, tentacles for us, no problem. <laughs> we'll start off with Hellboy Space. Okay, it actually is going to burn out in Hellboy Space. So it's a blank. It's gone. Then we'll do Abe's Space. And it's a three, so that would spread. So it's actually going to put one back right into where Hellboy is. And Abe's going to take three points of damage. He has two slots that he can put these. And he's going to have to flip his first one over. So let's see what that first one is. He's going to have minus one to his fight. Well, he's not going to be using his fight. Uh, then we have the one that's in the blank space. And that the one in the blank space is going to go away. And then we have the one where the tentacle is. As long as I roll a one, I rolled a two. Two points of damage. Tentacles, blah, 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 blah. done. <laughs> well, compared to the last case that I played on this channel, that one was significantly easier. I don't know if I just had the right people in the right places. Maybe I did something wrong with the boss fight. Let me know. But I'm pretty sure I did that right because I could use those insight markers to make them fire damage. And if it's fire damage, his resiliency was only two. I had my emulate already. It just happened to be already with my living flame at plus five. That was brutal. And this attack for five with this one and with the harpoon. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I had a lot of fun, but man, I blew him out of the water, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, regardless, thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping to do all the cases at some point. I've painted everything, so it'd be fun to show you guys. So I'll get another one on the channel at some point. Thank you for all the patrons. We really appreciate it. You guys are the ones that voted for this one to be re-shown on the channel. So that's why I did it. So thank you, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. I'll catch you at the next stop.